Hi, it's Larry here of Xbox's Major Nelson. Welcome back to the Xbox podcast. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment, do all the stuff that Jeff wants you to do. Hi, Jeff. I'm over, I'm over here. Jeff. Larry. The reverse the side. And that's Rebecca over there. And then, <laughs> yes. and, what's, and what's even better, Jeff, did you, first of all, welcome, gang. If we go full screen on Rebecca, we have Pumbaa in the background, kind of, kind of, uh, kind of kind camouflaged of a little bit. Yeah. I, that looks like, a, I thought that was like Simba. It looks like, like a lion <laughs> is does, sort of, yeah. a baby lion just anyway. sort of sprawled out he's, there. He's a very good boy hiding back there in all my calls. I've actually had a few people ask me, is that a real background or is that just a picture of your dog? But it's, yeah, <laughs> I was it on that call. Sometimes. Well, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. It's, uh, we're back. We're back in the seats. We're back in the show. It's uh, hey, guess what, gang? It's March. Yep. Yay, how do you feel about that? You know how like Tuesday doesn't have a feel. You know, no one goes. Yo, it really feels like a Tuesday. Like that's March. March is like the Tuesday of the year. Okay. Uh, I guess that's true. March, especially in Seattle, is still really chilly. Um, and gloomy. But down, yeah. But down here, you know, all of the like flowers are starting to bloom on trees. Spring and is here. It's kind of crisp. Yeah, in the Bay, oh, spring fun. is here. It's nice. I'm More gonna... of a Wednesday then for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Wednesday. Wednesday. I'm, lo I'm looking outside and I don't, I, it's not really spring yet. Spring. Got a little bit of leaves out there, but I can't tell if they're old leaves or new leaves. Yeah. Larry, did you change your glasses for the show? Uh, Maybe. Why? So I, we, I was in a meeting with Larry right before we <laughs> taped here. And I don't know if you still have them, but I was like, Larry, are you, did you borrow a pair of glasses from Elton John? Because they, I don't know if it was the light or if they, if they looked like they had sparkles. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I was going to say something. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Whoa. Can you like get closer? I Are those, is it like mother of pearl? What's the material? Yeah, there? there's a little bit. There's a little bit of that in there. Good, good eye, by the way. Whoa. Very good eye. I, I, I know. And I didn't know if it was the lighting, but it's like, no, that's, you should, when is, when are you doing your podcast duet with Dua Lipa is when I want to know. Yeah. Those are fantastic. <laughs> Very uh, should I keep these on? forward, Larry. Oh, I think you on. should. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I will, I will keep them on As long as you can see like normal. <laughs> for this audience. Uh, anyway, well, thank you for going that out, Jeff. Uh, we've got we got a great show for you today. We've got, uh, we're going to talk about what we're playing in just a minute. We'll, uh, we'll run through the news. We're going to talk about, we've got some great uh, interviews as well. We're going to talk about Pinball, Halo, Wolong Dynasty, all the things, all for you coming up. Right, gang? Clap, clap. Absolutely. Right after this commercial break. Right after. No, we're not. There's <laughs> no commercial. This, you know, you don't have to pay for this podcast because you're not getting your money's worth. Uh, and you know, we're just we're just part of the platform here. We're going to talk about some games. Uh, I I don't even know what I'm. What am I? Oh, I finished Dead Space. I'll talk about that. Really? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Go 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 on. You're already, no, I just, you're already <laughs> talking about it. You know, I mean, it's it's for those of you that played Dead Space. Jeff and I. Jeff was in the office yesterday, and we were talking a little bit about it. You know, there's a, there's there's a lot of really classic jump scare gaming moments in that game, and it was uh it was just so good to be back on there. You know, of course, in this version, the latest version, Isaac has a voice, so it's you know he's he's got more of a character. Um, so that that's isn't fun. there like sort of a I don't want to say director. That's that's definitely a term from a, a different game, but but something where. The jump scares you get, like some of them, I'm sure are scripted. Right. A lot of them might be different than what you get. Yeah. Um, and so, like, did you find that you were getting like unexpected, you know, dudes, you know, sneaking up behind you? There, there, you know, it's funny you say that because there, there was a little bit of that. There was like, you know, because I play with the headphones on and I love a good spatial. And that game is so you know, get your audio cues of things up and you can hear things up in the up in the duct work or coming down the hallway. And there was some moments where I'm like, I think I remember that something was going to happen here. I guess not. And then I start walking over here and it's not, it's more to your point, Jeff, it's more than just tripping a monster closet. It's a little more sophisticated than that. I think it's called the intensity director. I think okay. that's what I read. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that if, if things are a little slow, I don't know uh, if it's detecting how scared you are and it throws more things at you, but um, it's like right. this guy's walking really slow. We should right. ease up on it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it was, it was definitely a lot of fun there. So I'm going to, I'm looking forward to, um, to, to just, it was just so, it was just so good to be back on, uh, you know, on, on the, on the ship and, and being in the space. Ishimura the Ishimura and being in space and kind of going through it again. It was, it was really a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. So it's uh you know, it seems like a lot of people are. 
Yeah. That's good. So. I can't even watch The Last of Us after like 6 p.m. or else I get nightmares. So okay. I could not play Dead Space. <laughs> I finally started watching that last night and I had two independent nightmares about yeah. <laughs> about the and the fir- and the first episode not even especially scary. You don't really see all that much and I'm already having well, played through the game streaming of clickers and so yeah. um maybe should not watch after 10 p.m. I I do love the the first episodes um like the what's it called like the like the pandemic and all the chaos breaking out like those sequences I always love those parts in zombie movies and scary movies like the when everyone starts to realize like oh my god there's something happening and there were some pretty jumpy scary parts there but generally yeah the first couple episodes are a little slow on the clickers I uh I have not you know of course we're talking about Last of Us which which a lot of folks are watching you know it's based on the the hit game and uh we are um you know I have I have not seen any of the episodes yet so let's keep the spoilers free gang cuz I'm going to wait until it's everything's done and I'll I'll binge it. Yeah, uh, you know speaking of Pedro Pascal, I don't know if you Who was? Maybe it fits in the news. Who's who's the, the starry <laughs> place Joel? Yeah. Um at, he's also, you know Mandalorian is back and he's, he's like on everything, Today? right? He Perfect. really is. Yeah everywhere like uh yeah. but you know what like everyone likes him and uh malik who's oftentimes it. on the show and he's actually in la right now uh oh he's doing the red carpet this. isn't he oh that's right he did the red carpet and he yeah. was like in real life pedro pascal is apparently incredibly nice he was spending time with fans Ooh, you always that makes like, me so happy to hear, hear yeah. yeah yes yes and i actually i don't know if you saw um uh the nick cage movie with him like uh, the unbearable way oh yeah he's, he's really I, funny I, he's that, really yeah. good in that movie too so you know what like uh, amazing that he can be everywhere and he yeah, has range uh, I'm fine yeah, with that. For he's sure. everything fine. everywhere all at once isn't he <laughs> uh, another great movie however no pedro pascal in that one yeah um but yeah yeah we can talk more about that later the uh the mandalorian uh tie-in well but, you know what i'll uh, have to have i'll have to have uh i'll have to have uh malik back on the show maybe in the future to talk about that i mean because you Jeff, or pedro you, pascal yeah. or pedro I, that's uh, what i was hoping he was gonna say well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to his people but i think i mean right now they're in the, they're in the publicity cycle of he's so of, hot right now right yes. he's everybody's mm-hmm. trying to get him on um, but yeah, I know it's, it's Jeff. I know you've done your share of red carpets. Rebecca, have you been on the red carpet before or done any of the Hollywood stuff? I have not. Yeah. We'll have to, no. we'll have to arrange that. Cause I've done, a, I've done quite a few of them. It's, it's, you gotta, you gotta at least check off the box to do it. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Stein was there, uh, last night doing a stream. Josh, a lot of you who listen to the show may yeah. follow us on Twitter and Josh Stein is a, uh, he's very online as they yeah. say. He's and, kind of uh, a Star Wars fan, just a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. So yeah, he was doing a live stream with some other members of, of the team. But yeah, he was doing that red carpet thing, which is- um, Yeah, which is a lot of fun. It's kind of fun to be able Very to bring cool. people along on that. The archive should be on twitch.tv slash Xbox. Exactly. So anyway, we we're talking about what we're playing. Jeff, let's get over to you. You know, you want to talk about what you've been up to lately? Well, <laughs> I've been no lifing this game. Oh, <laughs> I've been no lifing like a dragon, Ishin. I'm actually really close to beating it. Um, I, I'd imagine I'll beat it in the next day or two. Really, this is going to shock you. <laughs> really like this game. Like a dragon is, uh, <laughs> the, you know, what you may know as the Yakuza series now, uh, which um, its name in Japan, those that whole series was always called Like a Dragon. Now they've kept it consistent. It's now all future quote unquote Yakuza games will be called Like a Dragon uh, here. So Ishin. And we talked about it at some point in the past, but uh, it takes place in the 1860s. So very different. Um, t- turns out like a lot of these, the things that are covered in the game did happen. There's actually like a little glossary at, at a certain point where they'll mention a prefecture or a- Oh, uh, like historical uh, uh, references. A historical person. It's you pretty can cool. See it. Right. Now, did someone who looks a lot like uh, Kazuma Kiryu go through and single-handedly fight like a thousand people to- you know, foam at they the plussed Meiji it up restoration. a little for the game. Probably not. But then again, <laughs> I, I do like it when a game makes me drive dive down like a Wikipedia hole and I'm like learning a lot about that era uh, where Japan opened up uh, to, you know, and really had a lot of changes that sort of bring us, you know, uh, to the modern day. And so it's really interesting. And Well, you know, it's uh, interesting you say that because, yeah. you know, you look back in, in a lot of games, we've seen this in the Assassin's Creed games, you know, teaching yes, people history. Exactly. A lot of different games will do that. Um, you know, uh, Pentiment, great example, right? <laughs> very, very true. And you know, some of the folks in Pentiment that are referenced and things are are real life. Uh, Andreas, you know, wasn't Andreas Mahler? I think his name right. was in the game. 
Sakamoto Ryoma was a real person, a real swordsman in uh, that era of Japan. You're, just, you're switching. Again, you're switching from pentiment to something else. So. Well, yeah. no, but, it just, but it's just interesting that you know uh, to base it off of his real characters. Yeah, well, but but to actually sort of play an element of it is it's really cool. cool and makes you sort of you know identify i think like with what life might have been like for for folks back then. well you know it's and this is the way you know jeff when i and, and when you and i are growing up and maybe rebecca to a certain degree as well i mean this is how this is what we used instead of maybe some of us i know that certainly with malik it's the case he didn't read books um so <laughs> He's not here to defend himself. I feel like yeah. But I'm not saying anything more than the factual representation. I'm not going to judge. Um, but, you know, this is the way a lot of the younger the, the, the younger people are, are getting their history. And my sister is a librarian, and I've talked a little bit about this in the show. And she has kids. She'll ask me, what are the new games coming out? And she'll order books because she knows when that game drops or shortly thereafter, oh. people are coming into the library and asking about, some of the subjects that were covered in some of the video games, I gave her a heads up on Peniman. She had kids coming in asking yep. for Germanic history books and oh, things that's like pretty that. Cool. Yeah. So it's really, it's great to see that cycle that it will inspire you, Jeff, to your point, you know, you know, the, it'll lead them down a Wikipedia hole or want to learn more with a, with an actual physical book or maybe see an, a movie based on it. So it just, yeah. it, it's great. Cause it, the, you know, we as humans crave more information and we want to learn. And it's just so exciting to see how some games will do that. Yeah, I, I've definitely developed. That's happened to be, I know I'm thinking about it. Like after I played God of War 2018, I ended up buying the uh, Norse God collection by uh, Neil Gaiman <laughs> and got into that. And just it's just, you know, anything that sort of initiates that curiosity is really yeah. cool. So, um, yeah. So what else? Anyway, you, so that so is are we going to focus on that's what you're playing right now? That's what I'm playing, and then uh, I I mean I've, I've gotten very into Genshin Impact because my look, look if your kid plays something you're going to get into it. So <laughs> I actually have my my uh, I have an iPad that's like always just sitting right here off off side, and if a meeting gets a little boring, I flip it up there and I grind a little bit and uh, get into that world as well. But sort of my primary thing has definitely been been Ishin and. Well, uh, I'll make a note when we go into a meeting. If I see you glance off screen, I'll say, "Isn't that right, Jeff?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and I'll be like, uh, uh, "Yeah, yes." Uh, what did I just <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, Rebecca, what have you been up to? What have you, you had a chance to play? I know you've been watching The Last of Us, but what, have you had a chance to to pick up a controller or a mobile device? Yeah, uh, The Last of Us has been really taking over the conversations with me and my friends lately. It's a great show, um, Larry. You're kind of missing out. By I'm gonna. I'm going until to watch the it. end. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it. When, I'm gonna. I'm gonna watch it at the very end. So don't worry about. It. I'll get there. Don't okay. worry about it. Okay. Okay. Um, but aside from that, yeah, you know, I've been perusing PC Game Pass. There's a lot of really good games out, but um, I saw a lot of folks trying out Disney Dreamlight Valley. Um, so I've been playing that kind of here and there. I spent way too long in the character creator, um, but I'm kind of looking for my next good PC Game Pass game. Um, so if you guys have any recommendations, I'm oh, yeah. open. <laughs> okay, we'll, yeah, keep that, there, we'll keep that in mind. There's there's some good stuff coming. Like uh, actually, I think it was Ryan McCaffrey wrote uh, an article on IGN um, about like how it, it's having a great season uh, and like incredible season, maybe the best stretch ever. So I don't know if you played Hi-Fi Rush. That would be my, my oh, yeah. top recommendation. And then World Long Fallen Dynasty is out today, depending on when you're listening to this. Yeah, um, I actually just watched the trailer for that earlier. It looks it looks graphic, but really good. <laughs> well, I guess this, this is an awkward moment because should we just go into the interviews? Because Jeff has an interview about World Long fallen dynasty so yeah it's out today it's, it's really highly point. anticipated yeah. all right so, so rebecca why don't you uh, why don't you bring us into the interviews if you would please so like larry said jeff did a great interview for Wo long fallen dynasty and then larry actually did a couple different interviews for pinball fx and halo infinite's new season so let's check those out Folks that have been around for a while, of course, from Xbox 360, remember the amazing pinball games that we have on there. Well, I've got some great news. Pinball FX is now available on Xbox Series X and S, as well as some other consoles. Joining us today is, I'm going to try to get this name right, Akos Giorke. Akos, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, I'm so thrilled to have you on. Uh, of course, I remember, you know, folks have been following me for a while or been on Xbox for a while. Remember Pinball FX3, I believe, from the original 360. Uh, so it's it just was so exciting when I saw that you guys had a re-release. And I, I reached out and I said, let's get you on and talk about what's new in Pinball. So let's tell us a little bit about the game and how we can download it. Because you've done a few different things this time around, right? 
yeah, yeah, we we try to innovate. Uh, it's a bit harder in the pinball space, but you know we're trying to get some new stuff in there. <laughs> so uh, pinball FX is still a free download. Yep. As you know, has been FX two and FX three. Uh, you can get a bunch of tables. We have eighty plus now, so which is I think it's our biggest launch. And uh, you can get them from the store. But a new thing is the pinball pass, which is you know we can get it for a month. You can get it for a year, and it will give you access to to most paid, sorry most tables. Uh, you know, just by just by getting the pass. Yeah, and I, it's interesting because I have it loaded up here, um, and this is this is you, there's a free table right off the bat here that you get, which is kind of a Western theme, and you can kind of a little bit see a little bit of the gameplay here, and I'm trying to talk and play at the same time is a little challenging. <laughs> uh, but you know, this is this is is a fun little table to get into. But to your point, let me. In fact, I'll, I'll go in here and watch. This is this is live. This is actually happening because this is available right now. Is I want to go back and show the um the fact that you do have all of these tables available so i can go back in here and you can kind of see them and i've got access to many of them but there's there's quite a collection you got the marvel collection you know a bunch of different ones star wars all the, i mean look at all the star wars ones tell us about um bringing those tables to a digital format and how they're true because many of folks that grew up with pinball because pinball you know predates video games Tell us about working with the companies to 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 digitify, digify their physical versions of pinball because that's a really interesting project. Uh, it is, it is, yeah. Um, what we do with the Williams tables, which are the recreations from the '80s and the '90s, you know, these very legendary pinball tables, uh, is that we digitize the actual machines. So we get it into the to the office. You know, we do the 3D capture, we do the, all the, the things, we take it apart. So it's quite a, uh, an adventure to get these uh, going. And they're but all the different, Star Wars so it's and, not like, I mean, they're basically the yeah. same as a cabinet and it's got electronics, but they're all wildly different from the, obviously the design, yes. the gameplay, you know, the, the, the structure of them, right? Yeah, they are, every table is unique. Um, much in the design of the layout, like what you have to shoot. Yep. But, you know, pinball, there, there's, that's uh, going on. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you have to shoot different things, there's different quests. So these are all unique as well. You know, I don't know if you know this, but the head of Xbox Studios, Matt Booty used to work at Williams and he actually did a lot of audio for these games. So I haven't That's chatted nice. with him about how, what it's like to see the work that he used to do in the physical space migrate to the digital space. But that's an interesting connection that we have with pinball from, from Xbox. I'm sure you know that. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't know that, but it's, it's a fantastic fact. Yeah, it's very interesting. But, uh, you know, one of the things I want to talk about is, I mean, this has been our, uh, the Zen, Zen Studios has been on Xbox since, and people may not know this name, you do and I do, since Xbox Live Arcade. So you were one of the original kind of, uh, you know, digital delivery game systems on Xbox uh, and frankly in, in the industry, right? Yeah, yeah, we, we like to pride ourselves that uh, we are at the forefront of every innovation that's happening. So we are really happy to support Xbox Live Arcade and it, we've done really well there. So a Captain America table was, you know, the top of the page for so that was amazing. Yeah. You know, one of the things I want to talk about is we talked about bringing this, the, you know, a, a cabinet into your studio and scanning it in and getting it ready and bringing it into the console. But how beyond that, how do you migrate or make this really visceral physical experience of standing in front of a cabinet, leaning on it, watching the lights go off, watching the ball go around the table and translate it into a a, a digital experience? I mean, because part of it is, I mean, I remember playing pinball is, you know, giving a little English, giving a little kick to the table. How do you how do you do that? Uh, yeah, it's a, it is a big challenge. Um, you know, we try to bring, bring some haptics in there, you know, uh, do the rumble in the controller when you, you know, uh, kind of kick the, kick the table a little bit. Um, but our lead designer, uh, Peter Grappel, has been playing pinball for decades. He, he was there when you know, the first machines came into Hungary. He has a couple of machines in his home. 
So one fun thing was when uh, he did like slow mo um, recordings of the flippers because they actually move around a lot. You don't see it, but when the ball hits, they really kind of have a little wiggle. Right. So that was a big innovation for the Williams tables, and now for tables in pinball FX. Yeah, I mean that's uh, you know that's one of the subtle things that a lot of people don't don't know is exactly all of these little physical elements that you you and your team brought to digitizing table and and to be honest with you i don't think anybody does it at all like you guys i mean you're kind of the you're kind of the 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 main player in this area so it's it's going to be interesting to see and would you say that pinball as a whole the physical games is it on a resurgence or or is it kind of flat right now or tell us what you're seeing uh from where you sit uh yeah Pinball is looks like it's making a comeback. You know, uh, the home arcade or like these barcades are are popping up again. You know, in the U.S. and even like Western Europe. So there's a lot of physical machines getting released as well. There are more and more companies, even like smaller ones, uh, who has like has like kind of like one machine or like they work out of a garage. So yeah, it's pinball is is coming back. It's it has a resurgence in digital and physical as well. I'm showing a little bit of your trailer right now, and you can see all the all the boards are wildly different in terms of design and colors and feel and look. And there's so much there's so much, there's so many physical components. It's not just balls, you know, on a on a <laughs> yeah. on a board here. It's you know you've got things that really make sense in the universe of what what the pinball board. Like I love that noir one, that black and white one. That's so cool. Uh, it's it's kind of cool. What what what's your, what's your favorite go to board to kind of kick back and relax to? Do you have one? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a Williams one. It's called Whitewater. It's sort of like a, a rafting kind of mounted themed game. It's really fun. Right. And I, I want to point something out. And this is this. I, I, we talked a little bit about this, but I want to make sure people are very clear. This the base game is free to download. And you can go ahead and download, and and you get the the, the pinball uh, machine, the the, uh, the Western themed one that I showed just a moment ago. You'll get that right out of the uh, out of the gate. And as you said, you can purchase uh, the individual tables or a pass. So there's no reason you shouldn't be downloading this if you want to check out pinball, or if you want to introduce someone in your family, or maybe someone that's never played pinball. And then you may see a board that you may like, and then you can grab it, right? That because you have a whole in-game system here that I that I showed earlier. Yeah, 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 and we also have a, a trial mode for all tables, so you can try them out before buying. You know, you don't have to just play the the free Western table. Right. You can just try out all the different boards if you want to. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this. This is back at the trailer, but I, I'm I'm kind of going to go back here because this is this is one of my favorite, which is the Indiana Jones board, which is oh, yeah, which yeah. is kind of kind of just really. Really, and you can kind of see I just launched it right there. You know, one of the other things that, um, and I can kind of kick the board back, board back and forth here. One of the other things is you've got some really interesting um, uh, components here, like the manual camera setup and things like that that really enable players to do what they want on the pinball and look exactly whether they're standing over it or maybe down lower. Right? You can kind of move yourself around. Yeah, yeah, we have a different uh, camera options. And what's new here is we introduced a, a manual camera, which you can kind of go over a rail on the table and kind of find your kind of view that you want to use. Yeah, I'm kind of looking at it right now. You can kind of see it right here. I, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, we talked about the history of pinball FX on, on Xbox and it's on PlayStation, some other consoles. But what is this latest generation of hardware? What has that allowed you to unlock from a technical perspective that you, you didn't really have access to before? Um, yeah, we, we used our own engine for, for a long time. So now we switched engines. And you know, just the new consoles allow us to, to get the lighting really good. So while in FX3 and in FX2 and later pinball games, um, we were kind of on the on the lighter side. This arcade feel didn't really come through, but now, like on a Series uh, X, you can get ray tracing. You can get 60 FPS. You can do HDR, 4K, and the lights are just popping. You know, essentially, you talk about ray tracing because that's something we talked, we've been talking about for quite some time. This is a great example of it, where you can see the light obviously reflecting off the ball and the rest of it. So it's really, and again. 
go download it. It's a free download. So, so there's no reason you shouldn't check it out. It's, it's a, it's a fantastic thing. Anyway, uh, uh, you know, uh, pinball FX available now on Xbox series X. Nice. It's also available. Talk about the other uh, consoles and, and places that people can play this. If you would, Akos. All right, sure. Uh, so yeah, we are on, out on PlayStation and the Epic Games Store. So there you go. Lots of places to check your pinball out. Akos Giorki, you're the marketing director for Zen Studios. Appreciate you taking the time today to tell us a little bit about uh, about Pinball FX, available as a free download on all those consoles and, and in the Epic Store that we just talked about. So go check it out. Thank you, my friend. So a few days ago, Ryan McCaffrey wrote an awesome piece for IGN positing that Xbox Game Pass is having, perhaps, its best stretch ever. Talking about awesome games hitting the service, like Hi-Fi Rush, MLB The Show's coming out, Minecraft Legends coming out in April, Redfall, and Wo Long, Fallen Dynasty. It is out now on Xbox and PC, and with Xbox Game Pass and PC Game Pass, I've been playing, and I'm happy to get some sage advice, because... Let's be honest, I need it from Emmanuel Master Rodriguez, the community manager over at Team Ninja. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Jeff. Thank you for having me back on the show. Uh, it's exciting time. The game is finally out and uh, I'm looking forward to everybody's responses on what they think about it. Yeah. So, I mean, we're here. It's it's launch day. Uh, we we talked to you actually really last June, right after launch, and then we're, yeah. or right after announced, and there were a few things we couldn't talk about. Of course, we can talk about things now, which is great. I remember specifically asking you if we would see Lu Bu, and now we have that that answer. But uh, I, I'm just curious, like, how, how does it feel over at uh, Koei Tecmo and, and, and Team Ninja to have, like, sort of completed this arc from announced to now having it, the uh, Wolong Long Fallen Dynasty in players' hands? Right. So the um, I think the most important thing is that the team is looking forward to everyone uh, getting their hands on it now today and getting a chance to see, you know, how how they approach the game. There's so many different ways to approach the game. There's so many abilities. And we can talk on that a little more as we uh, carry the conversation. But I think the team is just finally excited to finally launch it. And we're eager to see everyone's responses and how they how they approach the game and what 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 they like most, you know, there's so many things in this game. We're talking about about 40 hours of gameplay. So, uh, and that's just the main stuff, you know, so there's so much extra stuff that's coming in and as well as DLC down the line, you know? All right. We are, uh, we're showing Zhang Lang, who I will say, uh, uh, definitely kicked my butt pretty well. Um, so <laughs> maybe we'll come back. That's, that's sort of the first boss at, at the end of the first the first level. Um, but let, let's talk about just like in terms of the pacing. Actually, if you I don't know if you want to keep that footage up there. Uh, but compared to Souls likes, you're moving at a run most of the time. There's jumping. There's double jumping. Uh, actually, yeah. kind of a vertical experience. Uh, I'll, I'll just a, really a lot faster than I might be used to in this genre. So I would love to hear from you on like you know. How, what do you want to keep in mind as you're as you're beginning to play the game? Yeah, I think the most important thing, and I'm glad you touched on all those things because the team wants to make it feel that there's this balance of offense and defense, and we have this sort of spirit system. That's what we have down there. 
at the bottom that uh, either teeters left or right, depending on which moves or special abilities that you use. And the idea is that you're balancing that with the combat. And the team wants to make sure that everybody understands that, uh, unlike a lot of other games that are out there, there's not necessarily a stamina meter that you're looking over. Exactly. You know? yeah, so yeah, you can yeah. run around, you can double jump, you can run up walls. Anybody that's played a little bit of Ninja Gaiden, one of our other projects that's uh, also on Game Pass, actually, the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection, um, will feel familiar with that. You know, So there's a little bit of little hints of some of our previous projects, but I think the team wants uh, the players to understand that you're balancing this offense and defense during combat by deflecting, by attacking, building up your spirit, managing your spirit, and also um, using the right build that fits your play style. That's the unique part of it. You know, you're trying to do something that you feel comfortable with. Let's get back to that, but just to sort of like draw a line under this part, the spirit gate, there's no stamina bar, and the spirit gauge is not just another way of naming the stamina bar. It really, right. like, how do you make it, what makes it go down? What makes it go up? Right, so the spirit meter at the bottom, right below your life, goes up and down depending on the types of move you do. So your regular attacks, like if you're using X as your primary attack, that's your, your basic attack. Then you have um, Y as your spirit attack, and that will drain a little bit of that spirit. But X, as long as you land the attacks, you build your meter up, and the higher it goes, the fuller the meter goes, and you'll see that it'll be blue. And you that's the those are the key moments where you use like your spirit attacks and martial arts and wizardry, you know, all these different moves that you have. Those are the key moments that you want to use it because that drains the enemy spirit. Of course, if your spirit goes all the way to the bottom and you get knocked down, you will be out of uh, out of breath. But that happens to your enemies as well. So the idea is that you're trying to bring theirs down as well. And uh, one of the ways that I found that was um, risk reward, but really benefited that spirit meter and actually had a lot of other great benefits is using this deflect system. You can block, but I, I and you know, I, it's on the shoulder button. But if you hit B, you deflect, which seems like uh, there's right. a lot of good benefits to that. Can you, can you talk about this? Yeah, mix? When absolutely. should I block? When should I deflect? Absolutely. So one of the things that we wanted to make sure, the team wants to make sure, is that you can actually block quite a few attacks in the game. So it's not like you're restricted to just deflecting. I know some people feel like, I have to deflect. That's not always the case. Feel free to block. Your, your spirit meter generally will not go down that quickly unless it's a big, heavy attack from like an ogre or something. But if it's general enemies, you can block, feel comfortable, feel confident in that. Of course, you can dodge by double tapping, you know, the dodge command. And uh, for deflecting, you just want to deflect prior to a, the attack landing, you know. You can treat it as a parry, basically avoiding any attack. And you can deflect lightning, you can deflect arrows, you can deflect, you know, major attacks, especially the big uh, glow, uh, red glowing attacks because those you cannot block. So those are the key moments that you want to use deflect. When the big red glowing attack comes your way, it's best to do that. And if, you're, if your timing is not all that great, that's okay. You can still dodge out the way. You won't get hit and it's uh, something that you can work up to. So um, the idea is just to basically let players know that it's okay to block a lot, but as you start to learn the deflect system, that's where the game truly opens up. It, it makes you feel like you're some kind of super ninja. It, there is that real feeling when you deflect, it's like, yes. And I remember yeah. the first time uh, Zhang, that first boss, because he can really cover a lot of ground on some of his attacks. And I I, I don't want to say I froze, but I was like, dude, I, I didn't think to dodge and I hit the deflect button and I parried it perfectly. And he sort of, you know, uh, recoiled a little bit and I got that spirit yeah. boost. And I was like, did I just do that? It just was a really empowering feel. So what I did is I ended up going back and some of the other enemies, uh, you know, the weaker, you know, folks that mm -hmm. you face, who, by the way, can still kick your butt very quickly if you're, yeah. if you're not careful. <laughs> you got to be careful. Uh, so weaker is, <laughs> is definitely, a, you know, maybe a relative term. But getting a feel for that and, the, and when, to, when to deflect and versus when to dodge or, or, or try to block, it's, right. a, it's a good, it's a, just a huge chunk of the game, I think, at least from what I've experienced so far right. in, and, in, and in experiencing it. Yeah, and in touching on that, what you said about the, you know, the the simpler enemies, you know, as you get into them, uh, I think that's a great practice. You know, if you're struggling with the boss, that's kind of the whole idea of when whenever you save, all these enemies respawn. You can kind of practice with them, level yourself up, maybe a little higher, so you can take on that boss that's been giving you some problems. You know what I mean? Can we talk a little bit about? Uh, it's funny you mentioned Ninja Gaiden, and I remember playing Ninja Gaiden on Xbox twenty years ago. I want to say the original yeah, one, yeah. and I remember that first boss. Definitely a bit of a, a test, you know, and, oh, yeah. and took me a lot of time. And then once I beat him, then, you know, I, I got a lot of forward momentum. And you could say that uh, Zhang is, is, is a test uh, at the end of the first yeah. level. So 
how would you advise as you're going through, you have a number of times where you can, you can uh, level up your character and you, you can choose between five different elements that you would uh, put your, those, those mm-hmm. points into. What's, what's a good way to get yourself in, in a good shape to be able to face and overcome that first boss? Okay. I think the best, um, great question. I think the best way to approach it is what, what makes you, what is your play style? First of all, you know, are you the aggressive type? Are you the defensive type? And I think start leaning towards that way. So if you're an aggressive type, maybe pursuing some of the early wizardry spells of fire, you know, and then it levels up as you level up the fire element, it'll also bring up your stats related to that element, you know? And then if you want to be a little more defensive, maybe, you know, water, Water might be your your element that you want to use using some of the ice attacks and whatnot. But I think the most important thing is managing your spirit system so that way you're not dodging too much because you're too nervous and uh, making sure your spirit system doesn't get too low. So you want to make sure you deflect when you can and land your basic attack so that your spirit is built up to the point where you can land a strong spirit attack. You know, and when you land those spirit attacks and those martial arts, that's when you start really taking down the boss, you know, and I know some people I've seen people because the demo is out right now as well for those that uh, that may not be on Game Pass, but they can still try the demo before uh, jumping onto that service, which I think would be great. And uh, it, you want to build up that spirit system so that way you bring down the enemy a lot faster. And I know people are struggling with the boss a little bit. And there's a moment in the game, actually, that you can actually summon a divine beast. And I think the divine beast really helps turn the tides. When you're in that second phase, people are like, oh, yep. what I do here, what I do that, you summon that. And you knock out the enemy, and that's how you take care of that boss. So I think that's the best way to get get across that boss if you're struggling with it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing some streamers and uh, YouTubers. Uh, I, I think we'll see quite a bit on on that. And uh, it is really cool because there are so many different ways you can customize your character. And actually, that's the first thing they do, or one of the very first yeah. things they do is is and it's a is a cool custom custom creator. So do you want to talk a little bit about the things that people can can mess with and and have fun with and experiment with? Absolutely. Um, so the character creation system is very, very in depth. You have a lot of options. Of course, the team tries to get you jump started by giving you kind of like a few presets if you want to do that, or you can completely start from scratch. You know, what kind of hairstyle do you like? Do you want it to be blue, green, you know, um, all blonde, black, doesn't matter. You have all those options. And there's so many different ways you can make them super short, super tall, whatever you like, you know, female body type, male body type, whatever it is, your preference, you can customize it. It's one of the most in-depth character customizations that uh, I've seen in a long time. So I'm very proud for the team for putting that together for everybody. And the really cool thing about it is as you make some of these characters, you'll actually be able to like customize and maybe make characters that you're like, you know what, I want to see if it can turn into this person or that person. And you can even share those characters. So if you have a friend on your friends list, you can send them, you can send them that code and they'd be like, Hey, I like that character. Can you send that to me? You can send it to them. You can make several presets because later on in the game, you'll be able to change the way your character is looked at. You can have one for the male body type, female body type, and then long hair, short hair, different color, doesn't matter. You'll, you'll have a bunch of presets that you can have and you can share with your friends. So it's, I really saw that cool functionality. Feature. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd imagine really we're cool. going to see some really cool stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine what people are going to create because it's you have that much freedom. Like, I, I'm always impressed by what I'm already seeing now. So mm. the fact that this is the first day out, I, I can only imagine what happens down the line. All right. So we know people, instead of listening to us, they could be downloading, they could be playing the game right now or the demo. Uh, what, is, what is the last thing you want to make sure that people really don't miss as they, they load up the game for the first time? Which is like that, that most important thing that, you know, the team is really proud of. And uh, you just want to make sure, keep your eye out for this because you're going to love it. Right. I think, I think the most important thing is just, or the, the, the detail that I think the team doesn't want them to miss, is just the overall fun of the game. It's, it's, I think a lot of people sometimes see this type of game and may be a little bit scared at first, but I'm telling you from playing it many, many hours, it's, uh, it's really easy to jump into. You know, it has its challenges for sure. There's certain things that you want to start mastering, like the deflect and learning what martial arts and wizardry spells that you have and managing that spirit system. But once you get into it, it feels really fluid. It feels like it's, addicting really that's what it feels like it's probably the best description i can give it feels addicting and you want to like 
get better at it. You know, even when you fail, you're just like, you always feel like that was my mistake. I could have done better from that, you know? And that system is very engaging. It's a lot of fun to get into. And as you progress, you start to feel more of that challenge and understanding, okay, I've learned all these skills now. So now I just need to manage them differently and get more into the battle the way, you know, it was designed to be, you know, just managing that offense and defense. Yeah. And uh, like you said, like sometimes I'll play a game like this where I know even a regular mob can can cut me down to size pretty quickly and you tend to maybe turtle up a little bit more. But I found when I just let go of my fear and just went on the offense, that's when I did the best. And so, uh, yeah, that right, that right there is is uh, is a good point, because as you get really good and you like you said, you let go of your fears and you just go all out and give it a shot. Uh, as you get really good at the game, you can just basically stop everything that's coming your way. You know, you see people from that are not even on the screen. You kind of get that sixth sense that's built up, at, as some people may say, uh, when when you're playing the game. So it's really cool as you start to get really uh, advanced in the game, how you can stop a lot of your enemies. And it just makes you feel really good. It just It's a really hard feeling to describe, but it, it, it feels good. It feels addicting. You just want to do more of it. So... Yeah. All right. Well, good. with that, we should we should stop talking. We should let people download the game. I mean, we still have more at the show, but you know, start that download now, and then when the show is over, we're almost done. You'll be able to get out there and play it. So, Woe Long <laughs> Fallen Dynasty available now on Xbox, on on a PC, on Xbox Game Pass, and of course, PC Game Pass yeah. as well. And there's a demo if you happen to be listening here and you're not a member of one of those services yet. Try it out. Let us know what you think, and actually keep an eye out for how how can people reach you, Emmanuel. Yeah, you can reach me out on Twitter. They can always reach out to the team as well for uh, at, at Team Ninja Studio or at Wolong Official. You can reach us, uh, reach me at O Master O on Twitter. The team is constantly looking at people's posts and all those things, uh, and we're just excited to be able to offer this game on Game Pass day one, as well as the demo for those that are just curious and looking forward to all the content that's coming down the line because there's still quite a bit left even after release. All right. Well, we will look forward to that. But for now, we've got some challenges. Uh, Zhang is waiting for me to come back and unlo- unleash a divine beast on him. So I'm going to yep. go take care of that. Thanks so much for joining us. And congrats to you and all of uh, Team Ninja and Koei Tecmo on launch. Thank you for having us. All right. Halo Infinite's largest multiplayer update to date is happening in just a few days. It's season three, Echoes Within. Joining me from 343 Industries is a good friend of mine, Brian Gerard, who has been around uh, the Halo universe as much as I've been around Xbox, which is kind of forever. That's the gray hair. Hey, Brian. Yeah, we're, we're old, man. It's good to see you, Larry. Thanks for having me on. Oh, uh, it's good to see you. I'm so glad to get you on. I was going through some notes, and I think the last time I had you on was like six years ago, and I said that this this is wrong. This is completely wrong. That's why like a couple weeks ago, I reached out to you and I'm like, hey, let's get you on and find the right time, and here we are. Hey, I'm glad. I can't believe it's been six years, but hopefully uh, we don't have that kind of gap again. So you know where to find me. We're going to start shipping a lot of stuff. It's going to be an exciting year for Halo. Lots to talk about. So Let's anytime. Jump Season three is days away. I mean, depending upon when you're listening to this podcast, it's either a few days away or it's already out. But let's talk about it because this is, this is, as I said a moment ago, the largest multiplayer update yet. Walk us through what, what we can expect when it goes live next week. Well, you're not wrong. This, I mean, if you just look at just the just the bullet points, there's a lot going on here. The team's been working very hard. Um, you know, it's been quite a bit of time since the last official season launch back in season two. Um, we've, we've, we've had a lot of ups and downs, trials and tribulations, but really excited with the way things have been going. We had a great update last holiday. So March 7th, uh, there's a lot coming. And maybe we'll start off with the most requested feature content that we've had since launch people just want more maps they want who, more to play doesn't? on right now i have to so, ask you a question brian because yeah. you know, before we get into this you know i i made a allusion to it a moment ago you've been around involved with halo you you started working on on at what was bungie working on halo in, in 2003 right yep so you and I joined, I was on Xbox in 2003. So you shipped a lot. I remember, I remember the excitement with the DLC maps that you shipped through all the different halos while you were there. And so you've, you've talked about a lot of maps in your years involved with halo, haven't you? I have, and don't quiz me because it's frankly way more than I could possibly remember <laughs> or get right right now. It's kind of, you know, kind of goes part and parcel with uh, getting older as, as, uh, as you noted earlier, but yeah, I mean, it's also crazy. We've come a long way. We're obviously offering a full free-to-play game on Xbox yeah. and PC nowadays versus the old days. 
not only was it obviously not free to play, but the maps came out via premium map packs you had to buy, right? And, and then you had to go find the hopper it, to play yeah, with the right, right people. It was it was kind of bifurcated. Yep. Remember that? It was kind of hard. Yep. I just love that it's just ubiquitous now. Let's Everybody go. gets everything. And, you know, there's a lot to be experienced and enjoyed for free. And there's also some really cool things for, for, for on a premium track for folks who are interested. I'm looking over here on my screen, and I believe I have, I don't know where it is. Um, oh, here it is. We've got a fly through, which is kind of good. Can we, can we play this and kind of go through what we can what and show some of the maps and you can talk through them do you mind for sure no okay. I'll, I'll do my best not the expert but um let's do it larry all right stand by i'm gonna bring those in here in just a minute and we're gonna go through we're gonna we're gonna look at them and we're gonna take a look at these maps because the maps when you think about you know halo halo's always had some amazing maps um but let's go ahead and play this in here and brian why don't you tell us about them let's hit play yeah, sure and let's see Yep, I see it. That's a black X. There All right, here we go. <laughs> cliffhanger. So, yep, cliffhanger. There it is. And as the as the subhead says, there, this one, you know, all the maps, like you said, usually have are grounded in some sort of fictional angle. Um, this one was developed to be, uh, you know, it's like a, an Oni uh, sort of black ops type of site. I love this kind of map because it's asymmetrical. Um, I'm a big fan of one flag CTF. You know, where you take turns attacking and defending. Just a different style of gameplay. Um, I like that this map has outdoor and indoor environments like these snowy peaks. I kind of get a little bit of a reach vibe here personally, yeah. kind of takes me back to some of those reach environments that we're used just, to from back in the day. I just want to freeze um, it so we can take a look at the beauty yeah. of some of these maps. And the one thing I love about this, this, um, this video, which is it's available on your YouTube channel. There's no gameplay. There's no music. I mean, there's a little bit of music, but it's just the beauty of the halo universe, right? Absolutely. Just allowed to speak for itself, right? Plus, uh, we I don't think we can pick up on it on this broadcast right now, but if you watch the video natively, you also can pick up on all the... There's a lot of ambient sound design work that goes into every facet of these maps that, you know, in the heat of battle, you don't really hear it, but right. in, you can really appreciate thousands of bespoke sounds that are planted all around the map that just add to that that immersion that again you don't find that in gameplay it's just too I much have going to tell on you, and I, I had to stop the video for a second because i want to talk about that because i mean i've i remember going over and interviewing a lot of the audio team uh, at 343 and bungie and that's you're right that's the one thing that the audio in a game and I, you I, you know i've been talking about this for almost, for 20 years um that the audio in the game is one of those things when it's done right you you don't even notice it it just feels right but when it's done wrong it's really obvious and that's what i love about the you the the universe and all the weapons they've got the right sounds all of the ambiance sounds they just they just they just work so anyway big fan of that you know that all well right. i'll give a big shout out of course the audio team world class and if for folks that may have missed it for fun go back check out the halo youtube channel there's a bunch of fun uh field recording videos there that shows the audio team going out in the field and all the lengths they go to to capture weird noises that they remix and match together, and it becomes really cool alien st stuff that you'll hear in the game. Um, that feels like I'm with you. That just makes the universe come alive. All right, let's go to the next. Uh, the next. Yeah. Map here. What do we got? What do we got? Okay, so this is another arena map, um, yeah. as it says here, Chasm. Um, this one obviously very steeped in a forerunner aesthetic. Um, this is heavily inspired by a space that players may remember from the Halo Infinite campaign. Uh, in fact. As members of the team are running around playing co-op, uh, when we launched online co-op for the campaign, they just kind of started thinking this would be a pretty fun space to have some MP skirmishes in. And it kind of went from there and got developed out a little bit. And now we have kind of a, a really cool, very iconic, classic, Forerunner-inspired environment that just feels right at home in Halo. And of course, you got the light bridges here, lots of wide open sight lines. I'm not a great sniper anymore Plus these days. Altitude. but Right? You right. got... And imagine, you know, you want to throw your grapple shot up there, get up to vantage points. I can imagine some really high risk, high reward uh, sprints down that down that middle um, that that middle corridor there. So that's that's looking for. We got another one coming up here. Tell us what we got here. All right, and this is our third oh, new map, BTV, um, and this one, of course, <laughs> big team battle. Right? It's this is called Oasis. Um, a, a new aesthetic here a little bit for us kind of got the desert and canyons. Um, it is asymmetrical as, as well. Has a lot of great lanes for vehicle combat. Um, it's really heavily designed. Most of the BTB maps really, really thrive with vehicle chaos and bringing that sandbox to life. Most of the vehicles can drive through all the interior spaces too. Um, you know, so loading up a Warhog with your friends, you can get some spotter sprees, take some ghosts inside the corridors. So pretty much anywhere you can go on this map, you're at risk of being run over by a vehicle. Um, 
also kind of, you know, as somebody in the team pointed out, kind of gives me a little bit of a standoff vibe um, from Reach. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, again, I'm getting a classic aesthetic vibe here, but um, I'm really, really blown away by this map. I love the aesthetics. I love sort of nature meets technology personally, the overgrowth here you're looking at. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to get in there. You know, Larry, you and I were chatting. Some of my favorite, for sure, hands down, my favorite infinite memories to date have been jumping into BTB. Um with you and your giant crew of people yeah. and we so, just played for hours and it's not, nothing beats it. We had, we had so much fun in those. And it's funny that that one particular map that we just played the big team, the Oasis one, it reminded me, and I don't remember what halo it was, but it was more you spawned on the beach and you went up to the, you went up to the kind of the, there was a it's concrete, I, I don't remember exactly. I'll have to go. I'm sure internet you'll you'll drop. You mean Zanzibar, if the giant wheel. No, I remember Zanzibar. Oh, okay. That's All classic. Right. You can't remember okay. that one, uh, or you can't forget that one. No, it was, it was like you went up high ground. Like, I think yeah, high ground. That's right. It was uh, a little smaller, but yeah, it was asymmetrical. You start on the beach, you kind of storm the base. It was really yeah. awesome for there like was, one flag like, and there, stuff. Yeah, there was like a little. Uh, There's a little area down below here, yep. and you had to go through. You could oh, close yep. the door, open the door. Oh, love yep. that one. That's what. Yeah, that so do I. Of. So do I. I um, I'm a sucker for for asymmetrical maps personally. I, I really like the one sided nature. So we talked about the maps. In fact, I have this great graphic that I'm going to bring up here that I think you guys distributed in your channels. And this is kind of this is what we're going to talk about. We've got we yeah. About there's the a maps. lot. Yeah, we talked about the maps in the upper right hand corner, uh, chasm, cliffhanger, and oasis. But let's start in the upper. Uh, I'm sorry, the upper right. Let's go to the upper left and talk about new weapon, new equipment, and some other stuff there. Tell us what we can expect with the uh, the bandits. Yeah, so this is exciting. It's the first official like new weapon added to the sandbox since launch. It's been a long time coming. Um, the Bandit, I'd say, really, it's reminiscent of the DMR from Halo Reach, but right. it's not it's not one-to-one. But I would say it draws inspiration from that. Um, for folks that are really into this kind of stuff, it, it's a five-shot kill. Um, <laughs> it, it doesn't have a scope, though, so, which means you can't be de-scoped. Uh, but this weapon really excels at kind of medium to long range, and it rewards accuracy and pacing your shot. And the more you get kind of wild and squirrely with it, obviously you're going to miss. But I think in the hands of some accurate shooters, this thing is going to be devastating. And it, for me, it kind of also reminds me a little bit of like the Halo 5 Magnum. I think this yeah. could eventually become a great starting weapon for certain game modes as well. I also want to point out that, you know, weapons are... There, I mean, everything about doing multiplayer in a video game is difficult, making sure it's properly balanced. Weapons is one of those things where, you know, you it's got to be the right weapon. It's got to feel right in the universe. It ha- can't be overpowered. It can't be. It needs a it needs to have something that can also kind of answer what it's doing. So there's a lot going on with weapon design, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, big shout out to our sandbox team. And I should also point out, like the most to me, the most difficult challenge isn't just getting it right the first time. These are these things are always kind of evolving, right? And you'll hear people talk about the meta and how things are going to change. In fact, uh, folks can head over to halowaypoint.com. We have some articles up with the Sandbox team, but we've been, we've been doing weapon tunings and weapon adjustments based on player feedback. Right. Um, a couple of those things were adjusted uh, recently. I think there's a few more coming in for season three, but it's like they don't just ship and arrest on their laurels. There's always room to keep tuning and looking at the data and making sure nothing's really overperforming or underperforming. And, you know, we also have to look at things like a full competitive esports league and making sure that we're making the right tools for, for that as well. One of my favorite things I remember when you were, guys were working on Halo, when you were working on Halo 2, I'd come over and see you in your office after you would let me in. And um, they always, and I'm sure you have it now, but there was always a lot of people, there was a heat map, which yep. was the overhead view of a particular, of, of mul- a multiplayer map. And it showed you where most of the activity was, whether it was the the kills or what have you. And I always love that because that, that's, that's just a great way to visualize exactly where the choke points are, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I know for level designers, that sort of like user research and those analytics are, are critical. And it's just a way to, augment the anecdotal feedback they might get in play test or through a yep. you know through flighting and whatnot but it, the data doesn't lie it just shows you like there might be a problem here everyone's dying in this spot and by the way this whole back part of the map that we spent a lot of time on no one ever goes back there no so back there, yeah. <laughs> maybe let's put a spanker rocket launcher back there and see if we can lure people but you're, you're absolutely right like it's a it's equal parts arts and science as far right. as I'm concerned. All right, let's bring this graphic back up here now. We talked yes. about the ba- bandit rifle. Now, notice, okay, I'm going to, guys, there's a little clue here. Shroud screen. Okay, it's a right. screen. It's not a shield. So tell us about the shroud screen. 
You're right. There was a little confusion because, you know, we had some of this content playable at the re- most recent Halo Championship Series esports event in Charlotte. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, some some things started traveling around. People started calling it the Shroud Shield. And I get that it has a bubble look to it, but it is absolutely not the bubble shield. And yeah. biggest difference is shield stops things from getting in or out. A the The screen is really think about it like a futuristic it's like what is halo's answer to like a smoke grenade something yeah. that's really designed for obfuscation um kind of it's trickery contained. stealth it is right so you can't see into it you can certainly shoot into it throw grenades into it but also on the flip side when you're inside of it you can't see out of it either but you can shoot out of it so i think it's pretty fun for sneaking around hiding in there with a sword you know someone's chasing you and they only see that you have a, an ar but Next thing you know, they come around the corner into your into your shroud screen, and maybe you've got something uh, to surprise them with. So, really interested to see how that might evolve the meta, how people might do, of course, things that we've never anticipated, and it just opens up new gameplay mechanics that are don't exist in Halo today. Yep, here you go, perfect example. So all of a sudden, what? Yeah, so it, it's 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 really just kind of let you set maybe set up in the background and hide something and then spring yep. it on your opponents or or maybe they they won't even know what they're walking into. That's that's another. Yeah, I mean part. that is the thing. Yeah, but yeah. it's a it's a brand new type of gameplay and a new niche that Halo hasn't really had before. So we're really, I know the team's excited to see how players take advantage of it. And, you know, I'm excited not only to get these in the hands of players, but I, I can't talk about it. I'll probably get in trouble, but. The sandbox team is not resting on their laurels. They're, right. They have more in the works for future sandbox brand new weapons and brand new equipment. So we're just getting started on that front. Stay tuned. All right, we're going to bring the graphic back. We talked about the Shroud screen. We've got two free narrative events. Tell me about those, and then we'll go right yeah, into Fracture. Yeah, you know, let me just speak to the... To, I'll, I'll cover both of those events together yeah. um, because, you know, we... Halo Infinite, for folks that are, maybe aren't aware, we have events that are periodic. Uh, they pop up in the game. They're free. Basically, you complete a series of challenges and you unlock free cosmetic rewards. Um, Now, for Season 3, we have sort of our marquee narrative event, which will pick up on the events that that occurred in Season 2. I'm not going to spoil any of the the details, but I think, you know, suffice it to say, a group of Spartans that are lone wolves went out on patrol, came back with an unexpected visitor via uh, a banished AI that is known as Eratus. And season three is going to pick up and kind of tell that story via some cinematics and sort of this event that will be themed as that. But the most important part to know is that first event kicks off uh, on launch at March 7th, and you'll be able to play through and unlock a completely exclusive reward track for cosmetics from just completing those events. Um, Now, the Fracture, on the other hand, also an event when that comes throughout the season, it'll offer a free free event pass as well that'll let you unlock content. The thing about the fracture that's cool is it's intentionally not really grounded in Halo canon. It's not really it doesn't have to play by the same rules. So the sure. team gets to have a little more fun, right, and be creative. You might remember the uh, the samurai we launched with the Roy Spartan, super yeah. cool. But we didn't have to worry about writing that into this, the canon. So um, season three's fracture will be uh, what you saw on that graphic. It's called the Firewall Armor Wait a minute, are, core. You t- are you telling me the bunny ears aren't canon? <laughs> I mean, they might be. They're not technically part of a fracture. So, uh, I mean, I would say they're they're popular and contentious enough where they, if they're not, they should be written into canon. Um, exactly. I mean, I wear them sometimes. So, what are you going to do? <laughs> something about beating your opponent when you got when you got actually too, Larry. If you weren't aware, we have something that we call earception, where you actually can wear the cat ears and the bunny ears. Oh, I do it. Oh, I do it. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing, I think, to, to, to take somebody down with, with the full ears going. But, um, you know, both of those cores, actually, by the way, that we saw on that graphic. So the, uh, the firewall core there on the left will be available. By the way, these are both available free for all players. So you're going to get the cores right away. And then as you play in the Fracture event, you'll unlock cosmetics that allow you to kind of customize your firewall core. And then on the right, we have the Chimera core, which is essentially the SPI armor that Halo fans might be aware of from prior games. It's been a fan favorite requested since launch. Um, A lot of cool cosmetic offerings will be available uh, once that is released uh, on March 7th as well. I'm just just looking at some of the other graphics that you guys sent over. Like, I love this. That's a, that's a great look. Yeah. You know, it's like your own kind of customizing your own Spartan and going on your own Spartan journey has kind of always been at the heart of the team's vision for Halo Infinite multiplayer. And I think we're really starting to finally see that, that come to light. And, 
you know, you and I were chatting the other day when we're in games. Now you can, you start to see in those opening camera lineups, everyone looks super different because there's just so much more content that's available. And I think what season three is going to show is not just more, but the, the quality and the depth and the variety of content is, is, is going to keep increasing. So the coatings are more detailed. You're going to see more effects. You're going to see more geometry versus just paint swaps. So, um, it's been exciting for me to see the team really start executing on that vision. Yep. So we got that. We talked about the fracture event. We've got the, the maps, your battle pass customization, the season three premium battle pass is, is you got that. Yeah. You we're, know? you know, battle pass is a part of our, the thing I think I want to stress there is, you know, we, we, we have a lot to offer for players who want to just play for free and have fun because it is a free to play game. There will be plenty of cosmetics between the event pass and the free track of the battle pass to earn and, and unlock as you go. Um, but folks for folks who are interested, the premium pass offers even more, um, including uh, not only will you earn back 1000 credits, which essentially means the pass could pay for itself. Right. Um, but if you go back to that graphic real quick, they're actually offering uh, the official right there, go premium, show it off um, the red steel coatings, um, you'll get a suite of coatings that work on all the armor cores that's exclusive to the premium pass. So, oh, fun. you know, I think the team is constantly trying to just listen to feedback. How do we add more value? How do we add more unique ways for players to customize their uh, their unique Spartans? And um, I think those those new coatings look pretty awesome. I just realized, too, Larry, I forgot to bring up one thing about the events that I'm excited about, too. Um, the Halo Gear reward program will be back for Season uh, 3. Now, folks maybe weren't aware of this for Season 2, but... If you finish the event, um, the seasonal event in season two, you were given the opportunity to purchase an exclusive bomber jacket um, that you could only get by finishing the event. Yeah. I know the consumer products team and the Halo Gear team are back and they're doing some cool stuff for season three. My understanding is there will be a an assortment of pins, like physical pins. You know, that you, know you will I love be my able. Pins. <laughs> I do too. And you've given me a few over the years and I still have them all, Um, but you'll be able to buy these pins online, but you can only get access to them if you've completed the event. So um, I'm excited to see how this rolls out. And I think, you know, they're also excited to get more feedback and it'll be a little bit obviously more accessible than an expensive jacket. Um, But I love the idea of real world tangible rewards for something that is only obtainable for things I do in game. So yeah. I think we're just scratching the surface there. We got uh, Escalation Slayer is a brand new game mode, which uh, set, tell, explain us how, how it's going to work. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll just, the easiest way to describe this, folks are probably familiar with gun game that's been around for a while and a lot of other games, especially like Call of Duty, I think kind of put that on the map. We also yeah. have Escalation Slayer and MCC, um, but Essentially, it's like a more controlled form of Fiesta. So you yeah. start out with a primary, secondary weapon and equipment. Yep. Every time you get a kill, it, re- it, it goes to the next one on the list. Um, what I think is very interesting here is that it's kind of it's kind of inverse. You start off with the rocket, so the most powerful, <laughs> but at the end, you're left with the oddball, which means you have to get a melee kill. Um, <laughs> and basically, whatever individual or team gets that final kill with that oddball in the final phase, they're the winner. Also interesting slant for Halo is you're getting a secondary weapon and a piece of equipment is changing each tier as well. Oh, so interesting. Um, I, I think it's going to be super fun. Yeah. And, you know, I was joking with you. I love Fiesta, but I generally have the worst luck and I just get plasma pistols all the time. Right. So this feels like the best of both Go worlds to, to me. It's going to force me, <laughs> force me to play the entire breadth of the sandbox. Yep. Um, but it's a little bit more predictable. Um, and it's actually not too unlike Last Spartan Standing, which was our mode from Season 2, which also had a progression through a fixed loadout. This is just like that, kind of on steroids. Now, one thing, since I've been, you know, I'm a Halo fan, you've been in the Halo, you know, you're working at, uh, on Halo for quite some time. One thing I love about this community is you, something you're really unlocking this time around, and, and that is, of course, the community playlist let's talk about that this is amazing yeah so obviously i mean ever since halo 3 what is halo without forge forge is the editor that we put in the hands of our players that lets them create all these amazing brand new experiences we launched the community collection playlist um recently it currently contains several maps that were 100 percent made by members of the community you can just see by the looks of this video. I mean, it, yeah. it used to be back in the day, you could tell like, oh, that's a Forge map. It's kind of gray. And but like, you on, can't, you can not really tell the difference anymore. Yeah. And the amount of, of, of just the technological advancements that the team made with Forge and the inve- just the overall investment there in general, it is a huge part of Halo Infinite today and will only become a bigger part going forward. So I'm excited. This is our first step to start bringing these community-made maps and modes 
into matchmaking, which of course just makes it easier to less like less friction. It's easier yeah. to find a play and it lets you play in those content experiences as a means of progressing your events or progressing your battle pass. Um, I should also note the custom game browser, which we had announced a long time ago, was supposed to be part of season three, but we actually surprised launched that in December. Yeah, you did. Um, or sorry, I guess was that that was November. I, I don't remember. I, yeah. I, we had two giant updates last year. We we pulled a lot of things in. I think it was December. You're right. Yeah. Um, so that's already live today. We should see some good updates for that coming in season three. You know, I don't have the list in front of me, but in general, a n- whole bunch of uh, bug fixes, quality of life improvements, polish areas. So it's like. The team's always not only looking at new content and ways to sort of keep feeding that that appetite, but always looking for opportunities to continue to improve. And we have a lot of great feedback coming in. So custom game browsers live, limitless okay. number of maps and modes to go play. We recently celebrated a, a, a milestone. There's been over a million pieces of Forge content created wow. since Forge the Forge beta launched. Shout out to Waffle um, House. <laughs> that, that Waffle House map was amazing, right? <laughs> Um, also, Larry, for folks that are really into Forge, they're going to be excited to know one of the bigger things coming for Season 3 for Forge, beyond just some polish and some more usability refinements, is the ability to edit uh, dev, dev maps. So you'll be able to take the 343 made maps, load them up in Forge, and reconfigure them. stuff, move <laughs> weapons around. Yeah. Um, and that was something that we didn't have initially, um, but that's that's been we know that's been highly requested, and right. uh, I think that will unlock even more opportunities when it launches. A, a ton of stuff, and again, I'll throw this graphic up again, and people are, you know, you can check out um, Brian and the Halo team on on Twitter or where have you at Halo Waypoint, and check it all out. But I also want to do a quick shout out. I know that the, that you guys have had some changes over there and refocuses, and you've been working on some stuff for Halo. And I'm just want to say on behalf of somebody who's an active member of the Halo community, I'm really excited to see where you guys are going. Um, I know Pierre, I talked to Pierre, maybe getting him on the show in the future, who's the head of the studio right now. And he said, he'll say it'll come on, but right now he's got some stuff he's got to work on first. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, there's obviously, there's there's been a, uh, I'll just say it's 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 been a year. There's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, I also would just want to give a huge thanks to the, to the Xbox community and the Halo community um, for sticking by us and supporting us. So we're really happy with what, you know, proud of what the team launched, but clearly we had some work to do to kind of realize the vision ongoing. And I, I'm really excited about the strides we've made starting last fall. I think things are starting to fall into place. I'm very, very optimistic and looking forward to 2023 is going to be a great year for Halo Infinite. And we're not done. So, yeah. I mean, we're not stopping. The team is is more committed than ever. And, uh, there's a lot more to come. So I think Halo fans sh- should be looking forward to that as well. All right, Brian, listen to that. Echoes Within, it's depending upon when you listen to the show, it's coming uh, March 7th, so it may be available right now. This is season three, a ton of stuff there. Brian, great to have you on again. Will you come back on again maybe real soon and talk about I'd love to, right, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we also, I'm going to throw in the gauntlet here. Another thing that you and I used to do back in the day that I also have fond memories of is we had a fun little rivalry match between, you know, Major Nelson and Team Xbox at the time, Sketch and Team Bungie. But I think we could bring back something like that again. Have a little, little, I miss the trash talking. Let's reactivate it. That was, that was, those are some fun times and those are, those are the kind of the golden era, but we can, we can go back and have some fun like that. You put the bunny ears on. I put the cat ears on. I'll meet you in the middle of the shroud screen. We'll see what happens. All right, Brian. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Larry. Thanks to all our guests. And for those of you listening, remember that today, Wolong Fallen Dynasty is out now. Uh, Jeff, exciting stuff. Yeah, great interview, yeah, Jeff. I, Tell us a little bit about the game. I mean, we heard about it in the interview. But. Sure, sure. Yeah, we talk about it. Uh, you would have just heard. Um, you know, it's a Souls-like. It's very fast-paced. Um, so I, I won't dive back into it because you just heard it. But the thing that I was going to mention is uh, Emmanuel Rodriguez is his... Uh, sort of handle, if you will, is master. And he actually signs off his emails that way. And so like, <laughs> we had to call him why on like threads, I'd be like, yes, master, uh, or thanks, master. And, uh, um, and I was like, okay, well, you know. So, do you, do you uh, remember Dark Master? Oh, no. That was in the Wait, original you- commercial for Xbox Live. Where we oh, had, that was that was like the gamer tag that uh, the, they were we were using, and it was like I should have asked him if that was if that dark, was him. Dark the very Master, same. So go look that guy. In fact, I think I've got the the original commercial on my YouTube channel. Go look it up. You'll see. Dark oh, Master. Funny. Uh, okay. Anyway, well, logs out, Jeff. You've got some news over there. If you can cue us yeah. up and get us into the news department. So yeah, uh, a, a, a few games available now as part oh. of uh, Xbox Game Pass. So uh, now that we're 
into March, uh, Merge and Blade came out this week, which is a, a fantasy puzzler and an auto battler. It looks very cute. Uh, F122, that will actually be, uh, yeah, by the time you listen to this, we'll have hit uh, the the vault. Uh, so if you're an EA Play member, if you're on Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, if you're a PC Game Pass, you will be able to play F122, uh, which is great timing. I want to say there's a season five of Drive to Survive might be out now. So good, good timing. As always, uh, Soul Hackers 2, this is a game, I want to say I talked about it last summer when I played mm-hmm. through it, but if you've been playing through Persona and you're like, I like this, I would like to play something else like this by uh, same publisher, and it's there's definitely uh, certain threads, especially in the battle, that are very similar, but it's a much more, I would say, adult. The characters are older, they're not in high school, it takes place far into the future, and really has some, I still think about some of the things in the storyline that... Uh, uh, so it definitely got through to me in that way. It's not nearly as lengthy as as those Persona games are. Those are typically 100-hour um, sagas. Uh, I, I looked back and I finished Soul Hackers 2 in, <laughs> you know what? I loved every minute. So, But sometimes, <laughs> you know, with a lot of other games coming out, it can be like, that was it. Like, that was all I played for a long time. And I was watching other games sort of pile up and I was like, okay, I better speed this up. But uh, Soul Hackers 2, a much more manageable uh, length that uh, I finished it just at, I want to say exactly 40 hours. And then, uh, of course, well, long di- uh, Fallen Dynasty. And then also just some updates. There's one I wanted to call out, which uh, came out last week, but we didn't have a show last week, but it looked really cool, was the New Zealand update for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Ooh, yeah. uh, that's cool. I have a friend who moved uh, to New Zealand from Texas, and mm-hmm. I sent it to him, and he was like, I see my work from here, like literally like in one of the oh, assets, in one of the trailers that we had done. And I was like, okay, well, clearly the team once again has done an amazing job of, and I mean, such a beautiful country. So having been there once uh, several years ago, I kind of want to fly through over like Lake Taupo and maybe do the uh, Auckland to Wellington view because that would be really cool. And I've never been to the South Island. So uh, now's maybe, your time. That will be, that will be the closest yeah. that I now's get. The time. And, and look, him. Speaking of uh, Game Pass, uh, if you are interested in PC Game Pass, but it wasn't previously available in your country, let's say you're listening to us from Costa Rica or Ecuador or Iceland <laughs> or Luxembourg. I'm sure there's somebody Very here specific from- specific uh, countries. <laughs> I'm sure there's someone here from Romania that's listening to us now. Well, guess what? We are Hit us now- in the YouTube comments or on Twitter if that's the case. We'd love to, we'd love to know. <laughs> well, yeah. Thought. So uh, PC Game Pass Preview is now available for insiders in over four, in, in, uh, 40 new countries. So we have uh, uh, the full list over on Xbox Wire. That's news.xbox.com. So you should check it out. And um, if it's never been previously available to you, you can sign up to try it out. And uh, I mean, look at this. There are hundreds of games available. Yes. Bulgaria, yes, Costa Rica, Iceland, Kuwait. Have I been? I've been to Kuwait. I've been to Kuwait. Uh, Liechtenstein, Liechtenstein. I love that. Look at this. This is everywhere, Jeff. I mean, the list goes on on Tunisia. Uruguay, Paraguay. I'll yes. keep going. Uh, really, like most of South America, yeah. parts of Asia, North Africa. Uh, so, uh, and, and of course, it was already available in many other places too. So, th- really filling in the gaps. And hey, 40 more countries. That's uh, a, a lot of Montenegro. A lot more games I've and, always and wanted to go to players. Montenegro. Yes. Montenegro. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's uh, it's uh, in the uh, Balkan region. That's um, right. Casino oh. Royale takes place there. Does it really? And well, okay. the the, cool. the the Daniel Craig version. Yes, yes, huh? uh, not the '60s version. All right, more <laughs> ga- and if you are a, a uh, uh, an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate member uh, or an Xbox Live Gold subscriber, well, there's more games with gold that are heading your way. Truber Book, Truber Brook, which is now available because we are in March, um, as well as Sudden Strike Four Complete Collection, and then later in the month will be Lamentum. Uh, and so, uh, three games this month, uh, to keep an eye out for. And of course, once you get them, they're yours, they're, they're just, they're just yours. So make sure you download them. All right. And then, uh, another awesome announcement, uh, we, we got to see it for the first time here was this Forza Horizon five rally adventure. It's coming out at the end of this month, March 29th. Highly recommend you, uh, watch the trailer. I want to say it was announced last week, but we didn't have a show and I wanted to call it out again. It looks really cool. I love rally racing and the sort of Forza twist on rally racing is not that you would have a 
uh, a navigator in the passenger seat, but a, a chopper is following you and helping to direct you through uh, to be able to get ahead of these turns that are coming so fast while you're off-road. And uh, I'm, it's a different type of, while off-road racing is a huge part of a Forza Horizon game, rally racing is different. And uh, and I'm looking forward to trying that out. I, and uh, it looks you, really cool. You know, I was looking at that because I, I remember there used to be some rally rally games on, on Xbox. And I, There's I, quite a few, yeah. And I think because have you ever, Rebecca, have you ever played them, or do you are you familiar like how how the how the navigator is calling out, you know, right turn, and they would they would they, <laughs> there's 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 a whole yeah. there's a whole sharp right hand. turn coming up or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, interesting. In fact, uh, and I feel bad because we should when Jeff and I were traveling a lot a few years ago, I feel like we could have done some good rally work. I, I feel like I was I'm driving, you were navigating. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Driving it. Yes. Uh, there's been a couple times. Uh, did I get us lost? Not that much. Anyway. So um, I think it worked out well. Fun. So we did talk about um, the Mandalorian. And so you might see some folks out there with some really cool Grogu controllers. Uh, there is. <laughs> yeah, they look really good. It looks really cool, sort of in his. Um, well, they got you know, a floating carriage, uh, and so and, and they gave him a little a little hoodie that kind of it's not like this, but it's a it's not a little, not exactly that's like a furry, yeah, well, it's, it's yeah. What he's wearing, you know, his, it's like, uh, yeah. exactly it's what he's wearing, his smock or wh- why don't I have one of those, what? Jeff? I don't have one either, like, like the controller jacket, them. yeah, the controller the jacket, one? yeah, I've got to, I've got to talk well, to the team, but but you 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 at home can get one, Jeff, right? Yes, fans can enter a sweepstakes for this limited edition Mandalorian-inspired Xbox Series S and X bundle yeah. featuring a custom Grogu, Grogu Xbox controller and hoodie with a simple retweet of the official Xbox Twitter account that is going on uh, now through May 11th. Plenty of times it opened fans globally. So go ahead. You can uh, look for that Look for that tweet on uh, twitter.com slash Xbox. All right. Um, even the the old Mandalorian controllers that we released in 2020, those are really cute too. Those yeah. are really cool too. We I'm trying big, to find a picture of the yeah, big time. I'm trying to find a picture of the Grogu controller, but I can only find it with the jacket on. <laughs> you can like Well, that's the only way you see green. Grogu with the jacket on. <laughs> I guess it's true. It makes it a little hard to push the buttons and use the controller. Fair point. Uh, it's wearing the jacket though. Yeah, uh, but uh, last out. thing, a lot of people are talking about it this week. Uh, Destiny Two Lightfall, um, mm. it's here. Um, it is. I would say my feeds have been dominated by it. Looks awesome. Um, there's, uh, of course, a, a raid and all kinds of stuff that uh, people are talking about. So more information over on uh, Xbox Wire to check it out. But if you're a uh, if you're a Destiny fan, you definitely already know about that. And uh, uh, but if you haven't played in a while. Some tempting stuff. It really looks really cool. So uh, I, I know folks are incredibly excited about it. If you get uh, you, anything else you got there, Jeff, I don't want to cut you off. No, I think we're in a good spot. You know what you want to do is if you get a chance, um, head over to the Xbox, our good friends at the UK, Xbox UK. They had a chance to chat with our good friend, uh, Phil Spencer, who's a friend of the show. Um, he uh, is over there. He's friend over of us in, all. Yes, he he's friend of gamers everywhere. Uh, but he over there and he talks to to Charlie Hudson about uh, just about gaming over in Europe and UK and kind of he was over there doing some work on on, on the Blizzard project. So uh, it was great to see uh, f- uh, Charlie and Phil be able to catch up and talk a little bit about that. So you can head over to the Xbox on channel. Yes, Jeff. S- something j- just came over the wire here. I don't think I'm listening to you when I'm on the show, Larry. I'm listening to all the other stuff coming through. Uh, a note from... Uh, 343 from Michael Shore, the Forge lead designer. I feel like we had him on the show at one point previously. Uh, Ford, the Forge beta in Halo Infinite has now passed 1 million creations, uh, which is an awesome milestone. This is so uh, new. We wow. couldn't even include it in the Halo interview that I had with Brian <laughs> earlier. This, that's, how, that's how new it is. Dude, are you serious? Yeah. It wouldn't even include it. Okay. Me. Yeah. Like, like it just came over. I'm wow. looking over uh, at a, a blog post we're going to be putting out, I guess, tomorrow, but. Yes, it's going to be out now by the this. time this this airs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so check it out on Xbox Wire. And there's uh, some really cool highlights um, in the community collection, some really cool looking mm. maps. Yep. Uh, but over 1 million Forge creations uh, since the beta launched and uh, uh, eight and a half million custom game matches played. So Ooh. fun. Uh, some really cool stuff Very here. Cool. Definitely check that out. All right. Yes. Yeah. 
And Forge, Forge is the source of such great creativity. I used to play some really awesome custom games back in the day in Halo. Let's see. I think Halo Reach was probably the one I played the most, but also Halo 3, Halo 4, and Halo 5. Uh, pretty good stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's in fact, I've got, I think I've got it in here. You know, we talked about that. They, you know, we go, go back if you fast, don't fast forward through the interviews. But if you go through the interviews, you can kind of see Brian and I talk about this. And this is this little graphic we pulled up quite frequently just talks about everything they've done for season three and how they're getting in a good, good uh, rhythm. And one of those, of course, is putting uh, putting some of those great community maps into playlists. So go back and listen. Very cool. Yep. And season season three next week, March, March 7th, March 7th. Lovely. Awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, wherever you are, hopefully you're having a great time. We're going to wrap it up here, get, let you get back to uh, whatever you were playing over there on your iPad, Jeff. <laughs> so, uh, actually, I, <laughs> right, I wasn't, I'm yeah. not playing because I can't stop staring at your glasses, Larry. The right. glint off the glasses. Hypnotized. Just, is it too much? No, they're it, great. Nothing could be too much. Should I go a little yeah. bit, a little more soothing like this? No, I got, I I like, how many pairs realize, of glasses were, do you have there? Oh, yeah. you, the endless. I've got like here. Yeah. These these may be a little bit too much, um, and I feel like wait I wait. There's more. There's ones that are even more, like even. Ooh. Wow! <laughs> I told you that, that, that's Ooh, sort of like, those are uh, loud. If you're, if you're in the uh, you know in the jungle or something, like peering through some palm fronds or something, <laughs> I might not see you. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. Thanks, gang. Thanks for uh, joining us on the show this week. It's always great to have you, uh, Rebecca, and of course you, Jeff, as well. We'll have you guys back next week. We're working on some more interviews, some more stuff. Uh, we're back in our rhythm. We need to get back in the studio. We're going to figure that part out as well. We love doing that live show. That was so much fun a few weeks ago. And yeah, uh, thank you for everybody. Thank Rebecca. Thank you for coming on up here to Seattle and joining us in the studio and Jeff coming over. And of course you lovely listener and viewer for joining us so all right gang have fun uh play fair file feedback hit us up on twitter if you want to um especially jeff if you have anything you want to talk about eagles you can hit them there season's over buddy let's not talk about yeah it. <laughs> all right gang we'll see everybody next week bye-bye everybody